Good afternoon. I'm going to talk about CSF exchange for treating SAH and uh, let's discuss a little bit what we have learned from Eraflow. My name is Behnam Reza Jahrami and uh, here we have a Eraflow device. So it's a double lumen catheter, uh, as an active EVD. It has three phases. There is a complication avoidance, secondary injury reduction, and then there is a therapeutic approaches to it. So basically what it does, it irrigates and then it drains, controlling the ICP. You can give medications, you can control the pH, and it's produced by the company called IREX. So if we give a look at the differences between uh, passive EVD and the active EVD or the Euroflow, you can see that the EVD is actually very, very old. It's about a couple hundred years old procedure. The idea of EVD is purely to relieve the pressure. It has problems with the infection obstruction and then you need to exchange it. And with this active EVD and Euroflow, uh, you can actually release the pressure source, whether it is uh, uh, ICH, IVH, or SAH. There is much less infection related to it since they, it irrigates the tip all the time. And there is much less obstruction. And it is active comparing to the passive one. So, as we all know, neurosurgery is heavily related to secondary injury reduction. And many times the blood in the wrong space actually activate inflammation, which then push to secondary injury. And our idea is that if we are able to reduce secondary injury via uh, removing the blood from the ventricle or subarachnoidal space quickly enough, can we actually reduce the injury related to the bleedings too? So here we have one example. Moya Moya patient with the ICH and IVH, uh, very large intraventricular uh, bleeding. Usually these patients lie in the ICU for a very, very long time. Here is a DSA of, of the same Moya Moya patient demonstrating the, uh, the pathology. So in many institutes, this kind of patient lasts in ICU uh, with the EVD for a week or two. In this case, we remove the IVH in 47 hours. And with the 47 hours, we achieve very good radiological and status and very, uh, with very minimal 2.4 milligrams. But we have also noticed that it is not only enough that you put the Euroflow and exchange the CSF, you have to do it with a high rate. So this is a multicenter retrospective data. On early experiences, we have noticed that the variation varies from about one third of the removal of IVH to 100%. And it highly depends on how quickly you actually exchange the CSF. So you can go from 40 milliliters to 180 milliliters per hour, and we like to use it as high as possible. So here is one example that the how is IVH is reduced from the ventricles during the day. So it's, it actually affects multiple sections uh, in the whole ventricle. We have already started one clinical trial called Active Removal of Cerebellar Hemorrhage, the ARCH trial, uh, which we are uh, investigating whether by actively removing the IVH we can reduce the secondary injury. But this trial about uh, SAH that has been coiled from a high-grade SAH. Patient needed an EVD. And uh, after coiling, we started to do Eraflow, Eraflow uh, of CSF with TPA after securing the animal. Uh, before the treatment with the Eraflow, the images look like And after 36 hours, we were able to remove significant amount of the IVH, ICH, and SAH from the cortical area, from the intraventricular space, very small amount of TPA. When you remove the SAH from subarachnoidal space, can you reduce shunt dependency? We found 15 patients whose chest score was more than six, meaning that they had a probability of 75% of shunt dependency. And from 15 patients, only uh, two patients actually got shunt and expected was 11 patients. So there was a significant reduction in shunt dependency after you remove the SAS from uh, superficial space after aneurysmatic um, um, rupture. Based on that, we had made a WASH study, so basospas and shunt dependency trial after SAH. 
The idea is to investigate whether we are able to remove bleeding from subarachnoidal space and reduce shunt dependency. And um, we are going to start this trial also during this year, and we have the same investigators involved as there were for the ARC trial. So I encourage you to try the device to see how do you see complication avoidance, secondary injury re reduction, and also the therapeutic approaches. Thank you.